I will speak with Prince Thrakatama. Guards you are dismissed. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today we will be working with the Roland MT32. If you're watching this video, you very likely know what this is all about. This is about awesome MIDI music for DOS games. If you're not quite sure what the Roland MT32 is and how it sounds, there are some video links down below in the description for you to check out. So maybe you just bought a Roland MT32 or you're in the market for one and you want to know how the heck are you connecting everything up? What cables do you need to buy and what else do you need to look out for? So this is the test setup we're going to use. We've got the MT32 at the bottom. I flipped it around so we can see all the connectors at the rear of the unit. It's a slot one system with an Intel Celeron processor. We've got a Nvidia video card. I'm using a four gigabyte micro hard drive. And here we've got an AW64 sound card. But we're also checking out another sound card, this uh, Audition 32 Plus with the Yamaha chip. Uh, both of these sound cards, the AW64 and the Audition 32 Plus, are my two favorite ISA sound cards and I keep recommending them so um, we will use both, especially looking at the mixer options. There are basically three things we need to get our head around today. The first one is the MIDI connection, connecting all the MIDI cables. The second one has to do with the audio cables. And the third step is looking at the audio mixer that comes with the sound cards. In order to use the Roland MT32, you need what is called a MPU-401 MIDI interface. And there are two types. There's the UART type, which is most of your sound cards. We've got an AW64 here. It's got a game port. And you can get these cables with a game port adapter to MIDI. And here we've got the Audition 32 Plus, also a game port here with the MIDI port. So these cards are compatible with MPU 401 UART. And then we've got these dedicated MIDI adapters. These are compatible with the MPU 401 intelligent mode. Now, the situation is that a lot of MT32 games do use the MPU 401 intelligent mode and that you need to use one of these cards. However, these are quite uh, expensive and hard to find. So there is a nifty guy out there and he wrote soft MPU, which basically does the intelligent mode compatibility in software. So you have a choice to summarize it. You can either get a intelligent mode MPU 401 and then that's all you need to get. Or if you're using a sound card like uh, most of you probably, you just need to install the soft MPU software and use a joystick to MIDI adapter. So let's have a look at the rear of the unit. We've got an on-off power switch. Here goes the power supply. Three MIDI ports, MIDI through, MIDI out, MIDI in, and our audio outputs in two single 6.4 millimeter mono jacks. Now, we're gonna cover MIDI first. So the MIDI signal will come out of our sound card and into the MT32. So we need to connect the MIDI out from the sound card into the MIDI in of our MT32. If we look at our MIDI joystick cable on the other end, we can see that it's got some markings here. It says out and it says in. So we're gonna use the cable out because this is the cable where the MIDI signal comes out of the sound card through this cable and then we connect it into the MIDI in. So MIDI out of the sound card goes into MIDI in of the M232. And then we just connect the other end for the game port into our sound card. This cable has a pass through for the joystick so you can enjoy uh, the MT32 as well as using your joystick. And that's really it. You need, you need not worry about the other two MIDI ports. So this one is um, not used. You can just put it there. It doesn't connect. And that's it in terms of connecting the MIDI cable stuff. So now that the MIDI connection is all set up, the MIDI signal travels from the sound card into the M232, which then outputs the audio signal through these two ports. So we need to route that signal into the line in of our sound card. But before we do that, I'm just gonna connect my PC speakers. These are just fairly basic Logitech powered speakers. And we've got a line out connector here. So this is where I'm gonna connect the speakers. 
and the line in connector is right here at the top so that's what we're going to use so the cable we're going to use is a headphone to RCA very likely you've got one of these lying around so the headphone connector goes into the lining of the sound card which is the blue connector at the top however we have an issue these two RCA plugs they don't fit into the MT32. Now there are a couple of options. You can buy a cable that goes from the headphone jack to two single 6.4 millimeter uh, mono jacks. However, much easier is just getting these adapters. So they convert from a single 6.4 millimeter jack to an RCA. So you just plug them into the back of the unit. Now you've got, we've got our RCA connectors and we plug in the red one for right and the white one for left. So to summarize it, you need to take care of the MIDI connection. MIDI out goes into MIDI in of the MT32 and then we're routing the audio output into the line in of the sound card. And the next step is configuring the mixer so that the line in actually works. And the final step is to configure the mixer. So if you got a Sound Blaster 16 or AW32 or AW64 and you've got everything connected correctly, by default you're not going to hear anything and that's because you've got to configure the mixer. So once you've installed your drivers, you should just go into the Sound Blaster 16 folder and then type in mixer set which opens the uh, mixer for the Sound Blaster cards. So we're gonna go through all the options. Voice, we're gonna leave default. MIDI as well. CD, if you've got a CD audio cable routed through, so uh, basically from the CD-ROM uh, cable goes into one of the headers of the sound cards, leave, these, uh, leave the CD like it is. But if you're not using it, you're gonna pick up a little bit of noise, so you might mute it. But in most cases, you've got a CD-ROM, so we're gonna leave that turned on and also the lining we're gonna leave that turn on but we're gonna mute the microphone and the speaker signal we're gonna leave master treble and bass just like it is and then we go over here to the inputs these are for recording we don't need them doesn't really matter if you turn them on or off but I like to turn them off so these are just for recordings and then these are for the outputs and if you don't have a cross here for line in, that means that the line in signal will not get routed through and you don't hear anything. So in our case, we're going to use CD audio and we want to hear what's coming in through the line in. So that means we need to tick these two boxes as well. And then we just got to go to save, press save, exit out, and we're good to go. Okay, and here we have got the mixer and the configuration setting for the Audition 32 Plus with the Yamaha YMF718 chip. The default configuration 220 for the address, interrupt 5 and DMA1, that's all fine. And there's one setting that needs to be changed which you, doesn't really make sense, but there's a kind of like a bug in the mixer. You need to set the Sound Blaster volume mixer to 1. And uh, if you don't, that means that all the other mixer settings don't work as intended. The other thing is you can mute all these Windows sound system uh, mixer settings. The only one that you shouldn't mute is the last one, the master volume, but all the other ones can be muted. There is no uh, PC speaker uh, input on the sound card, but there is a line in and CD volume and you can adjust those settings. So let's have a look at the master volume that's cranked up. I'm just gonna put that one down and the other ones, let's have a look. They go up to seven. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna put them on six, just one below the uh, maximum. Same for CD. And you might have to play around with the uh, volume levels for the line and the CD, but that should uh, be pretty solid. But the important thing is that you set the Sound Blaster volume to 1. Now remember earlier when I said that soft MPU gives us the intelligent mode compatibility. I'm not going to go into too much detail of how the software works. I've written myself a little batch file 
and the documentation on that website is terrific. It's just got a few options, so it's really easy to use. I'll put a link down below in the description. But basically, soft MPU will give us intelligent mode compatibility, so any Roland MT2, uh, MT32 game will run on a Sound Blaster card. So I guess it's time to test our system out. So we're going to try Win Commander 2. So we've got a Roland MT32 and we're using digital speech through the Sound Blaster. Configuration is correct. Let's see if that works. So the MIDI light, you can't see it, but the MIDI light on the MT32 is flashing. It's receiving a signal and we're just going to wait for the game to load. So here we are in the game Wing Commander 2. I did load soft MPU, so we are compatible with the intelligent mode which this game requires. We can hear the MT32 music playing, that's all working great. Let's start the introduction, because there's a segment with some digital speech where we can uh, check if the sound plaster gets routed through. I will speak with Prince Thrakatamon. Guards are dismissed. There are his grandson. So yeah, that's all working great. And that's basically it for this video. So that's how you connect everything up. Um, I hope there aren't any questions. It's uh, fairly straightforward once you know how it works. But if you do have any questions or um, what things you need, if you just need a uh, bit of extra information, or if you, I don't know, using another sound card, maybe I've used it before, just leave them down below in the comments. And yeah, if you haven't got an MT32 yet, but you are playing DOS games, I can highly recommend you get one. They are a little bit expensive and you might have to hunt, hunt them down a little bit, but they're definitely worth getting. And if you can't afford an MT32, I've done a few videos of building a MIDI emulator where you can run MUNT and basically use that as a basically an emulated MT32. I also put all those links down below in the, in the description. And that's it for this video, guys. So yeah, let me know what you think and I shall see you soon with another video.